Hey everyone. So today's a bit of a different video. We're going to be looking at some Switch OLED accessories and all that jazz. Um, it originally was going to be a video where it said, hey, here's some essential OLED accessories. I made me realize, however, that for starters, accessories are never essential, right? Everything you get out of the box with Switch, from the dock, the tablet, everything, whether it's this Switch, the original Switch, a light or this, you basically have everything you need. But I would say there is a point to some accessories where they th make things just a bit more comfortable uh, or more convenient in some ways. So we're going to take a look at a bunch of accessories here that were sent to me, uh, full disclosure. I actually reached out to them because um, I wasn't sure when these would be available, and they offered to send me a bunch of this stuff. Um, this is all coming from Skull and Company, uh, but they didn't pay me, and you'll... Let's just say I'm glad they didn't pay me because not everything I have to say is super glowing about all of these products. Uh, but we are going to look at some stuff here because, believe it or not, a lot of your current Switch accessories won't work with the OLED, uh, at least if you're talking about things like grips. Um, they just don't work with your old grip, won't work with the OLED. So we're going to talk about some stuff here uh, and whether or not I recommend these products. Um, that being said, before we do, we are giving away three copies of Metroid Dread. Uh, this month to enter just be subscribed and we will have additional details on how to complete all the entries later this month but you got to be subscribed for any of our giveaways which we do some during live streams we do some without live streams every giveaway on our channel you got to be subscribed to win all right folks that's uh emmy why don't you uh take care of samus here for me because uh you're certainly kicking my ass when i play the game All right, folks, so let's take a look at some of the um, the, the main main accessories here. Obviously, uh, there is this package that they sell right now for $40, uh, Skull & Company does. Uh, this is what they are calling their Neo Grip Plus Max Carry Case. And included in this is a case, which you can see right here. Um, you get the Neo Grip uh, and you get tempered glass. Now, I already have installed the tempered glass on here and it is a perfect fit. Uh, so we're not going to go over like how to install tempered glass. Tempered glass is what it is. You don't have to use them for tempered glass. Uh, there are official tempered glass out there that already exist for this. There's third party ones as well, obviously with Skull and Company. Um, it's tempered glass. I'm not going to say you need to go through them to get it, but it is kind of cool that it's included in a $40 package. Uh, at least it's $40 right now. I think it's on sale. Um, and this is their grip. Now, what makes their grip um, very interesting to me is uh, that it's different than the Satisfy grip. Now, Satisfy is widely considered to be one of the best grips for Nintendo Switch, and the reason is because it adjusts your right hand. So the right hand isn't always fully comfortable um, on here. So what happens is they took the grip and they extended it out so it makes your hand flare out a bit like this, which puts your thumb in a more comfortable position. This grip does not do that. Uh, this grip does have some unique nature to it, though, in that these things slide off like that. And you can exchange them for different ones like this. Look, you can have less of one. Uh, we can slide this one off. And I believe there's actually some extra ones somewhere. Um, let's see. I'm looking in the case. No, those ones came from in the case. So there was extra ones in there. I think there was an extra set. Oh, they're still in the box. There you go. So there's three sets of ones that it comes with. Um, I prefer the ones that it defaults with, but there's also these ones as well, uh, which offer a slightly different shape. Whoops. Don't worry. They're, they are just made of plastic, so you're not going to ruin them by dropping them. These ones are a bit bulkier, it seems. Um, just, a, just a little bit more bulky than the, than the ones that are on here. Let's see which one goes on which side. Um, let's see. I think this one goes... Yeah, I think I had that right. So there's just like a little rail system here that it just kind of... Slides on, then clicks, and there you go. Um, there, these ones are a little different than the ones that come installed by default because the ones by default have kind of a, 
like a trigger sort of on it that you don't really use. It's more so just to place your, your finger. So it's all about personal comfort, of course. Um, and then we'll get this one slid on here as well, just like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, these ones are just as comfortable, I'd say, as these other ones. They just have a slightly different backside to them. But the thing that, I, there's a couple things I like about this grip in comparison to, um, say, the uh, Satisfy grip. Uh, is for starters, this one is obviously purposely designed for this. Um, you can use this, by the way, with your original switch. Uh, there are three screws right here. You undo these screws, you take out this little plastic spacer, you put it back together, you screw it back in, and you can use it with this as well. So this is usable with um, both of the main switch devices. It's not usable with switch light, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but setting that aside, um, I like how this grip works, because this grip can do something the Satisfy grip can't. Now, I want to note what I'm about to show you is not officially supported by Skull & Company, and they will tell you on their website, you can't do this. But I proved you can, and it's not that difficult. So first off, let's slide the switch in. For, forgive my fingerprints on here. Uh, this is from doing a bunch of tests with all the accessories. Uh, so it just slides in like that, nice and tight. You can just leave it like this and just freely slide it out. I prefer using the little lock they have with, which just slides in back here locks it in place. It just makes it feel more secure. And you know, if you get angry and you go like this, the switch isn't going to fly out. Um, so yeah, I, I, I prefer to keep that lock on there. Plus, obviously the white and the black with the white Joy-Cons, I think this looks really, really nice. They do have a neon colored version of this as well to match the other Switch OLED variation. Um, but what I think is really neat about this that you can't do with the Satisfy Grip is this. Oh look, it doesn't dock, right? Oh look. It docked. Yeah. Skull and Company told me I couldn't do this. They said it would not dock. It does. Um, now, when you do look at the dock, it does bend it out a little bit. So that is why they're saying that this is not officially supported. And you might be thinking, Nate, if it bends it out a little bit, why would you do it? Well, with the glass screen protector on, I'm not actually worried about scratching anything. And I have put this thing in and out of the dock, I don't know, probably over 30 times in the last 24 hours, and I have zero scratches on my glass screen protector. So it's obviously not scratching that, and this plastic can bend, I'm not sure you're aware. Um, the plastic on the dock is, is, is flimsy, it bends, you can clamp it in or clamp it out. So you're not gonna hurt the plastic, so it goes in like this, and then you just put a little bit of extra pressure, not much, and it's already in. So it's a dockable grip. To me, that's vitally important when you're talking about grips, because the number one thing I don't like about the Satisfy grip is I'm someone who plays a lot in docked mode and also a lot in handheld mode. And while some of you guys don't mind taking things in and out of the grip, the little bit of steps that includes, this is just a bigger convenience to me. I don't have to take it out of this grip. Everything just works uh, and I can just leave it alone. I, I love this. I, I literally can just always use this, especially since obviously it comes with this case and it perfectly fits in the case. The case itself also, by the way, doubles as like, um, there's like there's like these little kickstand rivets in here. I don't really care about that too much. Um, it's just one of those cases that has those rivets. But it just, everything just perfectly fits in, in the case. This is pretty much, I wouldn't say there's anything special about this case. It's just kind of a bog standard case, right? You got your pouch up here. You got your game cartridge slots. You got your, you know, protecting the screen, all that jazz. Um, so I wouldn't say there's anything like super special about this case, you know, like it, it is what it is. It Velcro's in, everything closes up. Um, it just perfectly fits it with the grip. That's kind of the big thing about this case is it's more so meant for to be used with the grip. There's also an extra storage compartment underneath that's meant to store these, but you can store a power cord or anything you want in it as well. So the case is fine and it's, it's pretty hard. So I, I mean, again, I would say this $40 accessory packet to me is worth it just because this grip is dockable. And yes, even though it's not, off-centered like the Satisfy Grip, this is still significantly more comfortable. And honestly, having used the Satisfy Grip and now using this one, it's not that big of a deal to me. So um, I honestly think this is actually a really great package, only 40 bucks. You get the case, you get a screen protector, um, a tempered glass screen protector, and you get a grip that technically works with the dock. Now, because they said it didn't work with the dock, I did, I did ask them, hey, can I get this? So this thing here is called the Jump Gate, the Jump Gate Dock. Now, the thing with Skull & Company is they did a bunch of tests. Third-party docks are kind of a mess with Nintendo Switch because some of them will brick your Switch. 
Here's the thing. They did a bunch of power delivery tests with the original dock and a bunch of third-party docks. They have a whole video on their website about it. And they would made some interesting discoveries when doing that. Um, and they have got this dock tuned to not brick your switch. This is what they claim anyways. And to their credit, it hasn't bricked any of my switches. Uh, granted, I've always used the official Nintendo adapter um, and really any HDMI cable works fine. Um, this dock has a, a few features. Obviously, um, you can get a little extra support for your switch and um, it's got kind of got this push up mechanism to give it a little bit more support in the back. Um, it comes with two USB ports. Uh, it does come with an HDMI port. It does not have a, a LAN port. You can also like kickstand it up a little bit and like angle your switch more. You can also use this as a charging stand on a table. Um, so there's a lot of multiple uses. What really turned me on about this particular one though is this feature. Um, so let's say we're five, six years from now, you don't really use your switch anymore. You know, a lot of accessories like this don't matter at that point. Because the whole point of getting an accessory like this isn't that you need it, right? I just showed you, you could dock it in here. It's because, hey, when you're on the go, I mean, look at the, look at the size difference here. I mean, come on now. This is obviously a much more portable dock and just easy to, I, does, this even, does this fit in the case? Hold on. Maybe this is even like something you could fit in the case. Now, I told you earlier that I'm gonna, oh yeah, this will easily fit. See this compartment that, that, that I mentioned was in here? Bam. Look at that. So seriously, super portable. It can even fit it right in the case. So what I liked about this though is when you're all done and say, you don't need this sort of docking station anymore because you don't really use your switch in, in however many years. You know what this doubles as? There's this little thing back here you can pull out and look at this. You can slide this into a USB-C port on your laptop and you will get you know, not only an extra USB-C port uh, that can do pass through for charging as well for laptops, an HDMI port and two, of those, and two uh, USB-A ports, you also get SD card slots. This would be awesome for micro and uh, the big boy ones. This would be great to use uh, for any content sort of creation or basically anything where you need extra ports on your laptop. I'm like, man, that's really cool. It's like a double use thing. I thought that was probably one of the coolest things about this um, jump gate dock. So the biggest question is, does the damn thing even work? Because that's obviously a big concern with third party docks. And the answer is, well, yes and no. So it works. You can dock any of your Switch OLED or regular Switch on here, no problem. Um, there's different docking angles if you want. I prefer just the default angle it comes with. Works just fine, just like that, no big deal. It docks, it, it displays an image to your TV, it charges it. Everything's working, no problem. It charges accessories, you can use the USB ports, you can hook up an Ethernet dongle to it, everything's fine. Here's where the problem is. I don't know what Nintendo has changed between Switch OLED and this Switch, but this particular third-party dock with the Switch OLED will only output a 480p image. Yes, folks. Yes. Standard resolution 480p. Now, if you hook in an original Switch, just like that, it'll output 1080p. So, I don't really know what is different from here to here? They have the exact same firmware, the exact same updates, but for some reason, this one will output a 1080 and this one won't. I have informed Skull and Company about this so they can maybe issue a fix. You are able to update the firmware. I do have the latest firmware on this, this little dock. So there's a potential this jump gate dock is going to be useful for Switch OLED in the future, but for my purposes, now that I've made this my main system, this thing doesn't really have a use for me beyond the jump gate popping out like that and being able to use it with a computer. That's the only use I have for this at the moment until they release firmware that makes this work at 1080p, not 480p. So I don't think that you need to worry about this brick in your systems, but clearly Nintendo is still trying very hard to block third party docks like this. And I think that's a main, uh, a big issue with this particular product. So I'm gonna kind of leave this in the box until Skull and Company gets back to me and they tell me that they've issued a potential fix. So for right now, I cannot suggest you buy a jump date dock, a jump gate dock, jump date, <laughs> a jump gate dock, unless you're just using it for this switch right here. It likely will get a firmware update eventually. Um, I did let Skull and Company know, uh, but yeah. And you can use this for other things too. It'll charge smartphones and laptops. Again, it's a multi-use thing, but it was purposely built for Switch. Unfortunately, Switch OLED, they need to do some tweaks. All right, setting that aside and setting the extra accessories for uh, 
that come with this $40 package aside. Let's look at some other things that they sent me that I think are um, not really essential, but uh, are, are things that are fun. So they came in these little packages and one of the things that came was this and I wasn't so sure about it uh, and I'm still not sure about it. This is one of those like where you can turn your face buttons here into a D-pad um, like this. I, I haven't had much luck with these in the past, so I am not even going to bother to look at these. Sorry, Skull and Company. I'm glad, you know, I'm not saying I'm mad that you sent me these optional sticker esque accessories. I've literally, every single time I've tried these, they suck. Maybe yours don't. And if they don't, maybe I'll make a follow up video. Um, but I really don't care about these. Sorry. Um, I appreciate that you sent them to me. But also, there's something I'm never going to use because those things always suck and they always fall off. All right. So what else did they send me? Well, they sent me thumbstick grips. For those who don't know what these are, they, they're things that you could fold up. You stick on your, on your thumbsticks here, and they can change it from convex to concave. Uh, they can add more depth to it, like this one adds a little more height to it if you're someone who prefers them to be higher. Um, and personally, um, I've never been a fan of these kind of things. Uh, but you know, because they sent them, I figured I'd give them a try and I've tried all of the sets. It comes with, um, three different sets of them. And I've settled on ones that ended up making, um, the, uh, the sticks go from convex to concave. I actually prefer slight concaveness to my sticks. And I got to admit, I actually enjoy playing my switch more with them. Uh, now I haven't used things like this in a long time and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that these ones are magically better than all the other options on the market. But I can vouch that these ones are really, really good, and I really do like them, and they give you a variety of options for um, if you're someone who wants to try to make those sticks just a smidge more comfortable for yourself. Uh, so that's just something to consider. Again, I'm not going to say there's anything special about these, uh, but they are something. You know, they're an option for people like me that apparently I didn't even realize I was going to like them. So that is kudos to them. Now, they also sent me this Joy Grip. Now, Switch comes with a grip. So, why? Ugh. All right, so we got this grip. Um, it's got some plastic I can peel off on it. So let's do a little peel on that. I, hmm. So let's just take these off. I would say the only benefit to this grip because I mean, you put it on here and it, it's, it's pretty standard. I mean, you can see what it's doing here, right? Right. The only benefit to this grip is it looks like if you buy this grip, you can slide on some of these accessories. So let's take these other thick ones I have here. And it looks like they have the same sled system on the back, but let's, let's see. So I guess I could slide that on like that. And this one on like, oh, let's make sure I get it slid on like that. All right. I mean, I don't know. I, it's fine. I would say um, this is interesting, I suppose, if you play a lot of handheld and you get used to the position of your hands and this is basically gonna keep that position the same. Uh, I, I suppose I can see a use case there. I, I'll also say like, let, let's get out the original grip, which is still in my, my OLED box here um, because Obviously, Nintendo gives you a grip. So I, is it really worth buying the Joy Grip specifically? Um, to, to, you know, is it really going to give you a, a better experience than this? I mean, this is Nintendo's official one. I don't know. Let's, let, let, let's take it out and get a different feel. Because, again, this to me felt like one of the weird things they sent me because Nintendo gives you a grip for free. So, like, this is Nintendo's. Um, Nintendo's has a bit more flare out. We all know the doggo look. And I mean, all right, it's comfy. Feels good. All right, feels like I remember it always feeling. I'll put it back in here. Maybe, maybe, maybe a way to do it's like this. Let's put the one on the right hand, one on the left, like this. I mean, there's a different feel. There's, there's definitely a different feel. This, there is a different feel to it. But like, is it enough that I think you should buy a Joy Grip? I mean, no. I don't know. I mean, I guess if you need an extra grip 
for your friends and you happen to already own this $40 package with the with the extra grips. Uh, maybe you buy a Joy Grip, you know, just to so you don't have to buy another Nintendo branded one. But I mean, let's just be honest, they're basically the same. I I I mean, yeah, I I okay. It's a thing that exists. So, I guess in conclusion, um, what you really should be looking at is probably this bad boy right here. Now, again, if you enjoy Satisfy Grips, go ahead and go buy yourself a Satisfy Grip. Um, just know they're not dockable, and I prefer a dockable, a dockable situation. That's just my personal preference. That might not be your personal preference. Maybe you only play in handheld, so you really don't care. And that, that's, that's entirely fair. And you notice here how easy it is to slide these Joy-Cons out. There's also a different d design philosophy uh, between the Skull Company and um, the Satisfy. Satisfy has this like touchless thing going on with their new grip where they're trying to show you that, hey, the grip doesn't really touch your Switch because one issue with the old Satisfy grip is people that like, kept taking it in and out of the grip, put it in the dock and use it in handheld, they would, they would get a lot of wear and tear on their Joy-Cons. Well, that's one way to fix the problem. Another way to fix the problem is just have your grip be dockable. I mean, you got full access to the kickstand back here, the micro SD card slot. If the thing just docks in the first place, who cares? Now, keep in mind, Skull and Company does not advertise this use, but I've been using it like this for days now, and I haven't had any issues. No scratching, no problems. Yeah, it bends the front lip of, of the thing out a little bit. Maybe that bugs you if you're OCD. Who cares? As long as you have that glass screen protector on, I feel fully confident in it. And again, there hasn't been any scratches anyways, and glass is a lot harder to scratch in the first place. So maybe don't do it if, you have your, if you're using this, I guess, because it uses a plastic front, and that's easier to scratch. And then again, you can put a tempered glass screen protector on that switch as well. So I don't know, man. This is my favorite just because of this. So. If this is something you value, being able to do this, if that's something you value, yeah, I think that this is a great proposition. Plus for 40 bucks, it's really hard to beat. The, 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 the carrying case is pretty quality. As for the jump gate, uh, this is one of those products I was stupidly excited for, and I'm really glad it works so well with the original Switch, but um, until they get the, the firmware updated, I can't really suggest that you buy it. I know a lot of you still are gonna feel not okay using third-party docs. I can't convince you otherwise uh, if that's the case. All I can say is they do have lots of testing videos um, proving that they have put a lot of time and thought into this. That's why I'm kind of surprised there's not already a firmware update to make it work with Switch OLED, but who knows how long they've had access to Switch OLED. They might have only even, they might not even had access to the original Switch OLED before launch. They might have only had access to say a prototype or some sort of 3D print one to be able to make other accessories. So I don't know. I can't really suggest this one. Some of the other stuff, I'll link to it if it's something you're interested in. Like if you really enjoy these sticker D-pad things, it kind of gives you the SNES look on the buttons. If that's something that interests you, you know, it'll all be down here. I'll put the Joy Grip down there. Well, I, again, I don't think the Joy Grip's really any better than the included grip, um, but it's not worse. So there is that. So I don't know, kind of a mess in front of me. That was a look at some Switch OLED accessories by Skull and Company. Um, let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below. Do you want me to review more accessories? Do you, do you want me to build like the ultimate switch or do you want me to get some stupid accessories? I found some really stupid accessories out there. I found fans for the new OLED dock because you know, it needs fans apparently. I, I've seen some really dumb accessories. So maybe we can follow this up with some stupid accessories. Um, for the most part, all these are fine. This, this stuff, this, this one's amazing. Um, the jump gate should be, but all right, folks, I'll catch you guys in the next video.